Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Baiting Kaitos. We can finally leave Durr. Although, at, at this point, I actually forgot if we've seen this or not. But really quickly, allow me to show you something that has aged. It is our debt, if I could find it. There it is. Debt hell. Now you've got a sky-high interest to pay due to lack of planning. What a mountain of debt. Oh, if only you hadn't borrowed that first little loan. Ugh. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to a brand new area, which is... Dur Port. Well, there's the blue flower, but... Man, oh man. Look at that. And we're out. Just like that. See ya. And we automatically head to a new way, new way. Oh wow, it takes us right in. That was very kind. Now we can review with everybody again. Callus. King Latakan, I'm. Don't. You don't need to say anything. You're back with us now. That's all we care about. Let's destroy Malpercio and end this war. Callus, you managed to cast aside the powers of darkness that you had received from Malpercio. Since you were able to do that, perhaps there is still hope for Melodia. Please, please save my Melodia. Duke Calbrin. I will. I'll bring her back out from the darkness. I promise you that. Callus, thank you. I know you can do it. And then Corellia. Codell told me what happened. Welcome back, Callus. Thanks. But I owe my return to Shella and the others. And Lotus too, of course. I don't think I could have survived without them. That may be true. You may have been eternally trapped in darkness. But thankfully you're back with us now. With our combined efforts, it may be possible to destroy the Wicked God. Let us join forces and face this crisis head-on. Alright! Duke Calibran! Are you alright? I'm fine now. I certainly don't want to stay in bed while others are all fighting the good fight. How did it go? Well... Bad news. We lost the key item that we need to win. Good news, we made a retreat. I see. So, even the ancient wizard's descendants are unable to stop the evil god. Hmm. What should we do then? Sooner or later, the enemy will wear down our defenses unless we take some sort of action. For now, they only seem to be launching small and sporadic attacks on our towns and villages. It's as if they're toying with us, whittling down our strength. I say we should give them all we got, full throttle, invade Core Hydric Castle, and wipe out Malpercio while we still have enough manpower. It would be foolish to throw away your life like that. But... I doubt we could invade the castle with our current capabilities. Maybe you're right. But still! So you're saying that even though it's a shot in the dark, it's all we've got going for us? That's what I'm saying. If we give it a shot, it just might work. You'll never make it into Core Hydra Castle. Oh. Cadell! That waddle. Your Majesty, it's been a while. So glad you're in good spirits. It's good to see you again, Queen Shella. Why don't you think we can make it into Core Hydra? They have raised a powerful shield around it. There's no way we could penetrate their defenses. A shield? Well, trying to force your way in is useless. We can't afford to sacrifice lives in that manner. Uh-huh. A simple mind.
minded happy go lucky guy who uses brute force to solve everything is a major turn off to girls. Wow. That's enough. As you wish. That's how they end the scene. This meeting is adjourned. In time, with the children of the earth helping us, we should be able to come up with a viable plan. Yes, indeed. You all must be very tired. Take a well-deserved rest. Oh, and Callus, I got this for you. We went to Sadal Sud for a report. Someone told me to give this to you. Well, the only someone I could possibly think of would be the doctor, Larakush. A letter? For me? There's something I need to talk to you about. I'll be waiting for you in Sebel Rai Village. Do we even have any named characters in Sebel Rai other than Larakush? Yep, Larry Kush. Larry Kush? The Don, back in Sebelrai. Could he really have been working for the Empire with Gramps? Something to talk to me about. What could it be? Huh? What is it? Nothing. Thanks, Ketrin. No problem. Will you do me a favor? I need to go to Sebelrai to see Larry Kush. If he really did work with Gramps, he probably wants to tell me something about those days. This is a personal issue, so I don't plan on getting Shella and the others involved. Are you with me? Yeah, all right. Okay, if you say so. I knew you'd say that. Thanks. Let's go. Oh, I'm playing. That said, I still... Hey, kid. Oh. Where do you think you're going? I was going to say I do have other things to take care of. You're going to see Dr. Larry Kush, aren't you? We'll go with you. But this has nothing to do with you. It must be about Gramps. Precisely. I'm curious as to what the famed engineer, Dr. Geor, was working on for the Empire. You could get in bad, bad trouble. The great Mizuki should watch over you. It's really none of my business what you've got to do. But going at it alone is out of the question. I don't know what to say. Say let's go. Did that rearrange my party by any chance? No, no, we're still good. So, I have business to attend to, and I'm quite excited. Now, first of all, I think this was an area I was looking for. Hey, the music's back. When I was cleaning Queen Corellia's room, I tripped over a shelf beside her bed. Something that looked like seeds fell off the shelf. Those seeds may be the secret to her youthful beauty. That's why she hid them there. Ooh, the secret information. I'm taking that. There it is. Alas, why am I telling such things to a stranger? I've worked at this palace for 50 years and I've never made such a blunder. That's kind of funny. Let's take a look. A well-kept secret. Bane and blessing of the curious, yet secrets are never secrets for long. And you know what, while I'm here? I'm gonna get another secret information. Uh, the reason for this is that that was the hint. They're never secret for long. I'm going to age one of them. And as for the other, I'm gonna step out of town. Goodbye.
what a pleasant place. I really do love the vignette of the... It's not quite a vignette, but that, that archway of the flowers becomes more apparent as you get closer to the palace. In any case, let us head out of here back to the sort of world map, the island map. And let's go, surprisingly, to the other side. To Opu Village. Jog across the bridge really quickly. Maybe it's you. Are you the one? I hear rulers of various nations have gathered in Como Mai. I wonder if it's okay for them to leave their own nations. Maybe. Just maybe Anu Anue is the only nation that can survive. Okay, it's not you. It must be you then. If the atmosphere remains this tense, it can't be good for my skin. Do you know how Queen Corellia can stay so beautiful while under such stressful conditions? Maybe the palace has a secret method for maintaining beauty that was passed on to her. Well, here's a secret. Celestial flower seed? Oh, I didn't know that! But if that's true, I have to go to Komomai immediately. Here, take this. I don't even think this is particularly good, it's just... There, I've done a quest. Yeah, it cures freeze and is decent healing, but I don't really need it. Now... Oh ho did you know about that? Now, what am I doing climbing here? Well, check this out. If I can get over to the right, hopefully. I don't know how well I can do this. A water lark is right in front of us. We were asked to gather animals. What do you want to do? Let's catch it. Got it. Okay, I got it. If we take it to Kafal Jidna, the lady should be happy. Water lark. Talk about a secret. Let's take a look at it in valuables. A mysterious avian which floats on both air and water. Tougher than it looks and seen mainly in the village of Opu. Man, oh man. Alright, let's go back down this incredibly secret ladder. And now we can step out of this village and keep sweeping the islands. And stop listening to that mechanism anyway. Let us go to the celestial tree itself. Pigeons. I don't think of it, we were supposed to take some animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an animal. Should we take it? Yes. Let's take this little guy. Time to go. Got it. Pigeon. Small birds with deteriorated wings that move by hopping around, live in groups, and occasionally peck passersby. Now let's get out of here. I'm going to just completely skip town. At this point, I clearly have the ability to go to Sadal Sud, but you know what? I have other business, and I do love it when the game finally opens up and gives me options. So let's go to port, and let's go on the White Dragon, just like you'd expect. And this may come as a shocking surprise to you. But even though I've really had my fill of this place, I'm going back to Durr. I know. I know. Don't worry, I won't be long. I mean, it really probably isn't terribly long for you, but believe me, I am worn out of that accursed labyrinth. I am so done. And it's not even the labyrinth's fault, it's just that's where I did my combos. But I'm going to briefly go to... Nope, not Algarab. Capella, Garden of Death. Oh, whoops, I went out a little too quickly. There we go, got some rubber mud. Anyway, that was fun. Time to leave Durr. It might come as a bit of a surprise as to what I'm going to use this rubber mud for. Whatever it is, I'd better be quick because I think it only lasts for a few minutes. Maybe 30 tops? It's been a while because the only other time I needed rubber mud, I just instantly used it so it didn't matter. 
We're all going to go to Wazen. Remember this place? The White Dragon is back home. Now I'm going to head back to the... Whatever you call it. Town Square? I don't know. There's that girl who keeps falling over. Why? Why can't I skate well? How come everyone else but me can do it? It must be because of this pair of skates. It has to be. It's not that I'm not good at skating. Yep, yep, that has to be it. Well, as a matter of fact, she's right. Here, rubber mud. Let's fix it up. Yay! With these, I can skate like everyone else. Thank you. Light flare. Here, thank you so much. Oh no! <laughs> I guess changing this case didn't make me a better skater. Even at my tender age, I've learned a harsh lesson. <laughs> what a, what an on the nose thing to say. Anyway, also let's go back into the castle. I could finally get rid of those warriors' memories that I've been holding on to for like. How long was it? Like 40 or 50 hours? I've been holding on to them for almost the entire game. And this is the wrong location. I, I think they were on the right, but I have no memory of which like room or floor they were in. They might have even been up top. But whatever, I don't much have to worry about my inventory aging, especially not my quest inventory. Aha! My husband's smile still lingers in my thoughts, so... Queen Shella, I wish you wouldn't look so sad. Please show the people of this nation a smile for him. But wait. Finally. The warrior's memories. I brought back their personal belongings for you. If only I could have handed them to you earlier. I'm so sorry. Your Majesty, please, take these with you. These Magnus once belonged to Sir Graham and my husband. I hope they'll be of some help. Golden Bugle. At this point, I have a bunch of them, honestly, but it's still pretty good. Thank you. I'll take good care of them. It's really not about the reward in this particular case. It's about the fact that I've aged the mementos into memories. I don't have particular need of a golden bugle anymore. Liud is chock full of them. Anyway, that was my little errand in Cursa, so let's get out of here. It feels really good to finally get rid of that one quest, Magnus, though. And now let us ride the dragon. And now we are finally going to go to Sadal Sud. Where to now? Well, you know who we haven't checked in on in a very long time? A very long time? That's right, it's Kuzmin! Check it out. We got a whole family here. And by whole family, I mean, uh, not the whole one. Oh, you've completed the family of Washia. I'll give you this as my thanks. Silver Ash. 
That's, I think, a new one. This ore was carved from a rare hardwood tree that grows once every millennium and is usually reserved for crafting sacred artifacts. It was created for the safety of travelers and fishermen. Attack 146 is just ridiculous. Anything else? Oh, this is bad. I feel dizzy. I'm not sure I wasn't showing up. This is very bad. Chances are high some of these people have information about their chosen relatives. Big hint. Anyway, I have a, uh, a couple of things to grab here. One. This is a picture of Usaibia, Christmas first wife. You don't need to keep looking at it. What? The drawer is open. Oh, I almost forgot. Taimia forced me to open it. I had it locked for the longest time. I'm mighty embarrassed. There's a whole mess of things in it, but can you get rid of them for me? There's a ton of naughty novels in this drawer. Should we take one? I don't even know what this means. Is this a quest item, or is this a, a regular Magnus? Naughty novel, I guess it's a quest item. Freaking weird. Yeah. Alright, well. A novel that was banned upon publication because of its... Ahem. Radical content. Once property of the ancient library of magic. Also. Terrible painting. We've had this, however. But I didn't write my oldest daughter by just name of the family tree. Is that okay? Oh, is there another autograph to get? My husband loves our daughter so much. He hasn't paid attention to me since we got married. What a shame. Sorry to ask you again, but you don't need me to write Baja's name on the family tree, right? Yeah, let's let's get that. Okay, you want me to write it right? I'll do it now. Oh! -ho! Look at that. Yaman's daughter killed in an accident, hence the overprotectiveness of the father. Oof. Yeah, died at eight. Rough. An accident happened in the past, so since then my husband's been overprotective of Eunice. Ouch. Uh, she was actually not the one I meant to talk to. Taimia? Uh, I'm looking for someone else. He appears to be getting worse. He can't stop coughing. Sorry to push you, but I hope you find the others as quickly as possible. Um... Ah, it's you. Ah, you're the young man from the Picture Book Village. This is the dance for sending off the dead. When a clan chief dies, people gather around and dance. You don't do this back home? I'm getting too old. And unless I practice in advance, I'll break my bones. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, terrible painting. Look at these delicate lines. A touch of realism couched in abstraction. Who drew this? Come to think of it, it's a picture I drew myself. I'm a genius after all. Here, I'll grant you an autograph. As exquisite as the painting itself. The terrible painting has become an unpopular painting. Amazing. There it is. A terrible painting by the self-proclaimed painter Mischa. Unappreciated by circles throughout the world, the artist's autograph does little to increase its minimal value. Ouch. Now this item actually does age, but it takes somewhere um, around the lines of freaking forever. I think it's like 50 hours. So, uh, see ya! In any case, we have Naughty Novel. This does not age. Now, the use for this thing is bizarre. Remember Sabin and Russ? I need to check the family tree. Can I just look at it? I don't even remember if I'm allowed to look at it. Like, I can't select it. Is there a way for me to do it? Valuables? I don't know if I'm allowed to just look at the tree whenever I want, but... Remember the one guy who said, oh, damn, Sabin's already home and he makes fun of me? You're gonna have to give me food if you want me to go home. Well, if I had gotten that guy first, then Sabin would say, man, if you want me to go home, you're gonna have to give me a naughty novel. So that's the naughty novel's use, and I don't believe I need to use that. I'm just gonna chat it up and see if I can find Sabin for safety. Because Sabin already lives in Perkhad. Yeah, I don't know anything. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. It's not my fault. I intend to convey that by keeping silence, so please don't talk to me. He just said there's a bunch of naughty novels. Should we take one? Yeah, so it's safe for me to discard it. 
so I just so happen to not need it. But it's kind of funny that the guy just requests a naughty novel. Anyway, my quest magnets are slightly more open. And you know what, now that I've completed another family's uh, box, yeah, oh, you've completed the bloodline of Usabia. I'll give you this as my thanks. Aurora. Well, hello, that sounds interesting. Oops, ah, I went too far. That's very good defense. A sacred artifact said to have been created by one of the gods. This helmet purifies the mind and enables correct judgment, even under stress. Yeah, this looks really good. Again, probably callous. Now I'm going to go advance a quest I've been working on. Otherwise, you know the one. I forgot which guy I need to speak to. Is it you? I think it's time I give up hoping that my cloud gull will heal enough to fly well again. I wanted to release it back into the wild. Without the company of other cloud gulls, the little guy must be getting lonely. Huh? Are you saying you'll take it to a place where it can make friends with other animals? I see. I'd be lonely, but I think it's probably best for the cloud gull. Here, take my buddy along with you. Got it. More animals! Often seen in Perka, these avians feed mainly on clouds, though Diadem's offerings seem too salty for their tastes. Now we can leave Perkad. And now we're going to get a whole bunch of animals. And we'll even get near to uh, where we're supposed to be going anyway. In Sebalrai. This is going to be a good time. You can see some animals already, can't you? This prancer is sensitive to hot weather. He's grown weak from the Sadal Sud heat. What? You want this prancer? Are you willing to take it to a cooler climate? What do you say? Let's take it. Okay, I'll take it. Really? Thanks. Just stay where you are. I'll leave him out of his corral. Got it. Awesome. A winged, horse-like animal bred chiefly in Sadal Sud is a beast of burden. They actually prefer cooler climates. Let's go right back in the stable. Can you believe it? See, the guy is gone. But wait. Now look. Oh, it's you. How's the prancer doing? Huh? What am I doing? One of my powers is ill, so I'm checking up on it. What? You want a POW too? You're kidding me, right? Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. No, I'm serious. Wow, I had to change options for this one. I'm not kidding. I'm already taking care of a Prancer for you. You might as well give me a POW too. You are serious. You must really want him. So you reminded me of the Prancer. Okay, okay, I'll give you one. Weird. Got it. Man, we are crazy. Pow milk is a chief export of Sadal Sud, enjoyed by aficionados worldwide. The pow itself is docile and playful. No more in the stables, but... Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. It might be in the next screen. Yes. Huh? You want a fantail duck? Let me think about it for a second. Promise to take good care of it? Of course. Of course I'll take good care of it, and raise up a nice, healthy, fantail duck. Honestly? Okay, then I'll give you some of my precious fantail ducks. I'll give you a regular one, a white one, and a little duckling. That should be enough, right? Choose your favorites from the flock, but remember, only one of each kind, okay? Duckling. White. Regular. Look at that! Regular. Easy to scare, yet quick to forget their fears, these creatures are often cared for by younger members of the family. Duckling. The ducklings of the species are born with brown feathers, with the females growing white feathers later on. And then the white ones. The white-colored females of the species are bred for their feathers, while the males provide tender meat. There you go. Now, let's go have a chat. I'm sure this is private business. We'll be waiting out here. Thanks. 
It shouldn't take long. Ah, you've come. Welcome. I've been waiting for you, Callus. Things must have been pretty awful for you, but I'm glad to see you're in good health. Thanks, Doc. Long time no see. I got your letter, so you have something to tell me? Were you really working with Gramps and for the Empire? Now then, where should I start? Hmm. From the very beginning, I suppose. With the experiment we were working on. It's been almost 20 years since... I hear you've been to the Empire, so you probably heard about us. Georg and I were born in a small desert village. We were recruited by the Empire around 20 years ago and began working on military research. Under Emperor Geldeblame's orders, we were supposed to design new weaponry, battleships, and iron beetles. But there was also another project we were assigned to, one that was kept strictly confidential. We were attempting to solve the secret of the madness. What you know today as the Magna Essence is a technology originally established ages ago by the warlocks of old. It consists of encoding and storing the essence of matter and decoding it later on to restore the material to its original form. Yet, it was said to be impossible to encode a living creature into a madness. Since quite some time ago, this type of research has been strictly prohibited. Creatures casted into a madness would end up distorted and defective when later invoked. But Georg had succeeded. He was a true genius. At first, we planned to make use of the power sealed deep within the lava caves. It turned out to be one of the sealed end magnets. Giacomo, Amy, and Falon were the results of those initial experiments. That's why all three have extraordinary powers. So Giacomo and his goons had gotten some power from the end magnus. That's right. But with the end magnus sealed away, that was the best we could do. So we took it to another level. You know what I'm talking about? Can't you remember? This is about you and your brother, Fee, Callus. Georg created you artificially. <sighs> Over the years, we conducted numerous experiments under close watch of the Empire. But even Georg couldn't succeed in encoding a living creature. Something very important, not found as a mere object, would be lost when a creature was encoded, and would be missing when the creature was reconstructed. It was then that Georg altered his approach yet again. Instead of encoding extracted Magna Essence, he began working on modifying an existing working Magnus to create a living creature. Georg seemed totally engrossed in his work back then. He chose a base material and spent months modifying and improving it, slowly altering the Magnus properties. His experiment was successful. Several months later, a new life was created. You were the result, Callus. That's why he's called the Divine Child, I guess. That's... That's impossible! I know this is difficult to believe, but you'll understand someday. Born from a Magnus, you were... How should I put it? Excessively human. You had too many of the flaws present in human beings, and you were born with just one wing. Geldeblame was unsatisfied with the results of that experiment. What he wanted was a pure, perfect life form. His intention was to study the madness of such a life form and to unlock the secret of eternal life. He would call this hypothetical life form 
The Divine Child. The Divine Child? Since around that time, Gelda Blaine became obsessed with overcoming the limitations of human beings. Georg furthered his studies based on your Magnus, making improvements until several years later, another life was born. A child born of a true, living Magnus. So you're trying to tell me that Fee, he was created too? But Codell, one of the witches, said she didn't feel any Magnus within me. Your Magnus is quite different from those found in this world. Georg had drastically modified the original Magnus. Suppose you brought in a creature with blue blood instead of red and asked someone to study its blood. Many would shake their heads and say, it's not possible, as the creature has no blood at all. When people think of blood, they picture a red liquid. A blue liquid would not fit the description. They would need someone to point out to them that it's simply a matter of the creature's blood being blue. Until then, they would picture the creature as being bloodless, even if the blood was right there in front of their eyes. A similar thing could be said about your Magnus. I think I get what you're trying to say. <laughs> Back to the subject. After Fee was born, Georg was a man redeemed. The time he spent with you and Fee may have stirred something within him that had been dormant for a long time. Or maybe there was something about Fee that brought about these changes in him. Eventually, 12 years ago, we decided to escape from the Empire. Tell me, Larikush, what on earth have we done? We succeeded in creating but for what purpose? Is it worth anything at all? Or did we merely open a door leading to further sorrow and despair? Georg, we have other things to think about right now. We need to make a decision. After all, we're their parents. It's our responsibility to do the right thing and protect them. Right. You're absolutely what do you want to do? Follow Gelda Blaine's orders and continue your research? No, we must put an end to this. Callus and Fee can no longer be victims of his vile ambitions. I understand. There's only one thing we can do then. Yes, let's destroy this lab with explosives so that no records or samples can be recovered. Nothing shall remain. We'll feign our deaths in the explosion and leave the Empire in secret. We should head for Mira. That island is close to the dimensional boundary and periodically shifts between dimensions. Even if they find out we set up the explosion, being in Mira should buy us some time. The four of us will live in peace. You, I, Callus, and Fee. Shh! Someone's coming! I came to confirm tomorrow's schedule for the Holomaton experiments. How is your analysis of its Magnus coming along? No problems. It's going exactly as planned. We need to account for fluctuations related to his growth patterns. We need more time, to be sure. I've told you this repeatedly. Hmm. So, you need more time. How much? Five more years? Ten? At your current rate, it may well take forever. We need results, not excuses. The Emperor's patience has its limits. Also, you have orders to dispose of the defective sample tomorrow. It's no longer of any use to us. No need to keep it alive. Oh, Jacob, how could you? Georg, don't! Giacomo, let me ask you, this experiment we're working on, the Emperor's plans, 
Don't they bother you at all? <laughs> you of all people should know better. I'm not like you or my father. Thanks to your experiments, I now wield a power no mundane human could ever hope for. Besides, you started all this in the first place. Now is not the time for regrets. You will continue the experiment. I will see to that, I assure you. I myself can hardly wait. What this project will show us, where it will lead us. There's so much to look forward to. Everything went as planned. We managed to reach Mira under the guise of travelers. Maybe it was from the shock of the explosion. When you awoke, after escaping from the Empire, you'd lost memory of everything that had happened until then. Fee was only three years old, so he didn't seem to remember much either. Soon after, I left Mira and came to live here. I don't know exactly what happened to you and Mira two years ago. Georg and I had lived separate lives. Imagine how surprised I was when seeing you brought to this village. Giacomo died in the Imperial capital. Is that so? So, I was born of a Magnus. Georg created me? I can't believe that. I'm not surprised. Take your time, boy. Let it sink in. Either way, you are yourself. That's what counts. How you were born is unimportant. It's the same for anybody. We don't choose to be born. We simply realize one day that we're here. That we exist. I have something for you. Georg asked me to give it to you, should you need it one day. This must be the time. Gramps left me something? Yes. Way back then, when we had settled down in Mira, Georg told me he intended to leave something for you. I don't know what it is, but you'll find it in a cabin up in the Celestial Alps. The Celestial Alps? Yes. There's a cabin near the mountaintop. Georg and I built it after we left the Empire. A cabin in the Alps. He stashed it there, huh? Yes. I suggest you go there and look for it. Well, that was a lot of information, but now we have a goal. Doctor. I need to ask you one last thing. Who gave me my name? The Emperor, Geldeblame. Hearing you were not the perfect being he had envisioned, he called you an ill omen, a cursed premonition of things to come. He named you Callus, which means raven in a long-lost language. I see. After we left the Empire, Jorg and I tried to give you a new name, but you would have none of it. Your name was the one thing you remembered. I guess it was the reason for my existence. And my hatred, something I just couldn't get rid of. Callus? 
Are you okay? I'm fine. Would you all come with me to the Celestial Alps? The doctor said Gramps left me something there. No problem. I don't know what went on in there between you and the doc, but cheer up, kid. Yes, we have so much left to do. We need you in high spirits. Focus your thoughts solely on this mission. You'll have plenty of time for reflection once it's over. Survival is priority one, right? Thanks. All of you. <laughs> okay, let's go versus it's not over yet. Either one, but I'll do let's go. Now we can step out. Let's head up to Perkal to prepare for our departure. There we are. And for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We left Durr, took care of a bunch of side quests, and finally learned the truth of Callus's past. He is an artificial creation, which is why a core Magnus was not detected in him before. They were looking for something that was different from every other Magnus of its kind that they had pictured. How interesting. And not only that, there's something left for us in a new area, the Celestial Alps. Hopefully, whatever it is, it's worth the trip we're going to take to get there as opposed to dealing with Malpertio. Until next time, everyone.